Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the 120th. As promised, today I'm going to take this out for a spin and see what I think of it. This is an Agfa Synchro Box. It is a medium format camera, takes 120 film, um, but unlike a lot of my other uh, medium format cameras, this shoots 6x9 frames. Um, so a little bit bigger and therefore you only get uh, eight frames to a 120 film. The, the, the camera itself is obviously a consumer camera. It was um, created as a, a camera that anybody could pick up and use and wouldn't be too difficult. Um, similar in, in many respects to the Ferrania Euro, although in fact this has a, a, just about fewer uh, controls. So fixed focus lens. Your closest focus is three meters. Um, uh, it's three meters to infinity. It's not an autofocus lens. Nothing is happening. It's just a fixed focus lens, which is similar to a lot of the kind of toy cameras that you used to get. It has a fixed shutter speed. This is your um, uh, shutter here. It's single action, cock and fire. That's it. And it uh, is, I've read a couple of things. Some say it's a 30th of a second, some say it's a 50th of a second. So for the moment, uh, the, the consensus is more towards the 50th of a second. So I'm gonna use that for my, my calculations. There are some options. So up here we have a, a, a switch. The dot is your 50th of a second, single uh, action, cock and fire, shutter. The top one is a bulb setting where you hold it down and the shutter stays open. Um, below that is this rather interesting um, tab. So there are two aperture options. One is f11, one is f16. Um, with the tab fully in, you're wide open at f11. With the tab one step out, that is f16. If you go all the way with it and pull it another stop out, that is F11 with a yellow filter. Um, now, using a yellow filter in black and white photography um, creates quite an interesting effect. It, it should give you some, a little bit more contrast in things like clouds. Um, so for landscapes, that could be quite nice and it's built in, which is, which is kind of cool actually. So those are your controls, there is nothing else. The reason it's called an Agfa Synchro Box is that in theory, it will sync with a flash. Although I couldn't tell you where, where that option lives. It does have um, two um, tripod mounts, one that way to take landscape orientation shots and one that way to shoot portrait orientation shots. And it has two viewfinders, um, one for each orientation. So portrait there, just goes through a mirror at the top uh, and landscape there. So to open it, we just push down on this rearmost button and it opens the back. Pull out the winding handle while rotating and then you should be able to remove this. Okay, and this is your, uh, this, is, this is your everything. This is your workings of the camera. So that is your, your only lens element uh, in there. Um, your six by nine frame, look at that, huge negative. That's gonna be cool. Um, film goes here, so we're gonna wind this way. So the film goes there, take up spool at the top, and then once that's loaded and tight on there, then we're gonna slide this back in. We're gonna keep that pulled out, that is pulled out. And we're gonna slide this back in. Now, um, for those of you that have watched my uh, review of the Ferrania Euro, you will know that I, I didn't do a great job of it. I didn't give the camera much chance uh, to, to, to shine. Um, because I put the wrong film in, I, I went out with the wrong attitude, so I'm gonna treat this very differently. Um, I'm pretty sure I've got a, uh, an Ilford Pan F, which I think I'm gonna use, which is a, a 50 ISO film. It's overcast today. Um, what I'm gonna do, actually, let's not cut corners here. Uh, let us 
let's go outside with a light meter and let's take a reading outside um, and get a proper a proper read on this. Make sure we put the right film in. Come on then, one light meter. And what I'll do is I will place this next to my face. It's actually quite wet outside. I'm seeing now. Check this out. Sneak peek coming soon. Large format eek. Haven't shot a frame yet. Going to. That's coming soon, watch out for that. Right, so outside, here we go. And we're looking for a reading of F11 or F16. Oh, that's actually quite wet, it's horrible out here. But this is what I'm seeing. Pretty miserable day. All right, so here we go. Hmm. So at, uh, with the current lighting conditions at ISO 50, with a 50th of a second shutter speed, I'm getting F6.3. I think we're going to be uh, in a far better position anywhere kind of around that sort of territory um, of, you know, ISO 50, 80, 125. I think it is now quarter past 11. Just another little peek at that, that Toyo view camera. Ooh, ooh, it's exciting. That's why you need to subscribe because there's some great stuff coming up. All right, let's go and have a look. Let's go and see what we got in the box of tricks. Let's move the, this is the Portra box. Look at this. Portra! Just shit loads of Portra. And this is my mixed film box. This is what we have available to us. So we have I don't think what I'm going to do with this. I mean, that minimum focusing distance um, of three meters kind of rules out any real kind of portraits or people. So, so an, an, an orthochromatic film might not be the end of the world. Should we do that? Ilford Ortho Plus. Let's do that. We're gonna load this in the bottom, at the bottom here, we'll load it right in the ass. Load it in the, load it at the bottom here, um, and I'm, it's gonna be face down, going up over the top. Okay, good. Look at that, what a, what a swathe of film, trying to keep some tension on the film. Wow, this is not easy to load. I think perhaps the thing to do, oh, screwdriver's magnetized. The thing to do was potentially, um, load that onto the takeout spool before, like start it rolling on the takeout spool before I then sort of stretch it over the top, but we're not seeing any film yet, although I may certainly don't want to um, right, let's keep that so that stays out. And we push that all the way in. No. Turn that with pressure on it until it finds a, there we go, seated, that's good. Right, then we're gonna close the back. I'm hopefully gonna give this a nice, neat little camera the very best chance of impressing me. Um, it's got a bit of a job ahead of it, but let's try. All right, see you out there. So let's get the synchro box out. Let's um, just start uh, taking some snaps. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is a bit of a landscape behind me. And then there's a bit of a gatehouse down there. So let's try some, uh, let's try some stuff here. Right, first shot I'm gonna take is this. It's a straight landscape. But with quite a nice sort of bridge, uh, bridge with quite a nice sort of wall in the foreground, um, sort of stepping down, giving a bit of an angle across it. So it's got something to it. Um, let's see what the light meter says. And we're getting F16, which is an option that I have. So according to this, if I pull out the that as far as the um, the stop. Um, I was just thinking in the car actually that I've got nothing to play with on here. There's no options, no settings, and I've only got eight frames. So this is gonna be a quick shoot. Let's try this. And 
that's it. Plonk, plonk. Frame two lined up, so let's head down here and um, get a shot of the, uh, this, this gatehouse. Might be a bit of interesting kind of um, depth to it along the, uh, along the wall. Third, no, three meters was the minimum focus distance. Between three meters and infinity, it's supposed to be pretty good. So let's just see where we are here. So three meters, and we're not even close to that yet. Quite like this shoot along the wall, which might be nice. Right, we're gonna go to landscape again. Uh, oh, should meter it really. F11. This is all going swimmingly. There's the other option available to me, so that should now be all set there. I'm going to wind on again. Right, I've just stopped at another place. Um, football field. I quite like these bikes. But you're not going to see anything on black and white, so I'm not going to bother with that. What, quite, what I'm more interested in is this um, sort of dugout down here, which I'll show you. Yeah, this is quite nice. Let's get out into the middle of the pitch and get a snap of that. Quite an interesting thing down here. A wander down here. Shots of the graveyard. It's a beautiful graveyard, actually. And that's just stunning. So there we go. The Agfa Synchro Box. Um, another revelation, quite frankly. Um, the images, if you if you put them side by side with a uh, modern high-end digital camera, aren't going to stand up to much scrutiny, but they really are not bad. Um, bearing in mind it is a fixed focus, single shutter speed, um, box camera, um, some of those were good. And I think the ones that came out, so the first one I took was pretty sharp in the middle, like, kind of big landscape. Soft on the edges, which is interesting, but then you look at it and I look at the kind of the way that it softens towards the edges and you get the impression that it might be to do with the film not being kind of fully tight across the back because it's it's not a kind of symmetrical circular softening. It's, it's, it's a, a, a planar softening um, where it's kind of uh, sharp right down the middle and softens kind of vertically across the sides, which makes me think that maybe it's to do with the kind of the the film bowing as it passes across the back but I mean long story short they're good photos they're great um, it's a fun camera to use because specifically because there's not much to play with since get out and doing that shoot I've done a little bit more research on the camera um, and come across a rather fantastic original advert for what was then called the Agfa Magic Box but it's clearly the same camera um, all the same buttons in the same places and whatnot. Uh, and you can see that there's two things it was originally designed for. Um, one was to kind of bring half decent photography to the average person who had no knowledge perhaps of, of, of much about photography. Um, and the second one was to make it affordable. And I think that it safely still does, this is now 70 years on, it still does both of those things. They're still, still relatively cheap to get hold of. Um, and you don't need to know much. And plus, I mean, this is the real kind of exciting revelation for me is those, those six by nine negatives, they're just massive, aren't they? Hmm, let's bring this light around the other way so you can really enjoy the size of those negatives. They are absolutely colossal. But yeah, so there we go. So uh, that original advert, it was two pounds nine shillings, which according to the uh, website of the, the National Archives, in today's money is roughly equivalent to about 75 quid. Um, and if you could pick up a camera that was taking images like that for 75 quid today, I dare say you might even uh, go ahead and get one brand new. Good camera and lots of fun to play with. And like I say, those negatives are just colossal, aren't they? It's great. 
So there we go, the Agfa Synchro Box. What's next, I hear you ask. I think it's about time. I did. I'm gonna switch from massive negative to small negative. Next one I'll do will be the, my, the, the camera I have owned the longest, the Canon AE-1. So I'm gonna go from um, zero options to lots of options. Um, and automation, you name it. Now I'm not normally a 35 mil shooter, as you know, um, but this camera holds a very special place in my heart. Um, I was given this camera when I was 13 by my dad, and I've had it ever since. To my, not well, to my knowledge, it's been in my possession ever since, so I know that it has not been serviced in 27 years. It's crazy, huh? And that is the uh, tank, the workhorse that is the Canon AE-1 program. So that's next, watch out for that. A rare departure into 35mm. Um, but today was all about the wonderful Agfa Synchro Box. A, uh, a surprise and a revelation. And a good camera and fun to use. I highly recommend it. Thanks a lot. Don't forget to subscribe. See ya.